the screen design aid or SDA is part of the application development tool set for AS400. It is used to design, create and maintain display files and menus. With SDA, you can design and modify application menus as well as display files. Generate DDS source specifications. Select fields from a database file. To start SDA, you can use any one of these commands. Start SDA from any command line. Start programmers menu and select option 9. Start programming development manager and select option 17. You can then see the initial SDA display. Here you have three options. The design screens option for creating and maintaining display files. The design menus option for creating interactive menus. The test display files option for testing the display files once they are created. Let us create a display file with a single record format. Type 1 on the command line to select the design screens option and press the enter key. Enter the name of the source file and library you want to work with. For the member parameter, specify the name of the display file that you are going to create. Pressing the enter key will bring us to the work with display records screen. In the option column, enter 1 to define a new record in the display file and also specify a name for the record format and press enter. This brings us to the add new record screen. Specify record for type since we are defining a simple display screen. We can also design sub-file displays, pull-down menus, windows, etc. Pressing the enter key will take us back to the work with display records screen. Here, enter option 12 for design image. On pressing the enter key, a blank work screen will appear. Press F10 if you want to include any fields from a database file in this display file record format. This will bring us to the select database fields display. Enter the name of the database file, the library and the record format from which the fields are to be selected. Select option 2 for including the fields for input only. Option 1 will display a list of all the fields in the database file from which you can select the required fields. Option 3 will select the fields for output only while option 4 will select the fields for both input and output operations. On pressing enter key, a blank work screen is displayed with the fields from the database file listed at the bottom preceded by a number which is used to identify each field. The cursor is positioned at row 1, column 2. This position contains a record identification code and cannot be used. The F14 function key can be used to display a ruler. Let us now design a display screen. To display the system date in the MMDDYY format, type star date in the required position. You can move around the screen by using the arrow keys. Similarly, we have star time which displays the system time as hours, minutes, seconds separated by colons. Let us also have a heading, new customer entry. Strings are to be enclosed in single quotes. To position the fields on the screen, move the cursor to the required location and type in the number identifying the particular field shown at the bottom of the screen. 
The number should be preceded by an ampersand sign such as ampersand 1 for the first field, ampersand 2 for the second field and so on. The number is followed by an L, R or C to indicate whether the field name should be displayed to the left, to the right or above the field. On pressing the enter key the screen appears as you see here. As you can see the date and time fields appear in the format we have specified. To the left of each of the fields that we have defined you have the corresponding column heading entries from the physical file cuspf. Once the fields from the database file have been placed on the display they disappear from the bottom of the screen. For character fields the fields are filled with I's when the field is used for input, O's for output and B's when the field is used for both input and output operations. Numeric fields are filled with 3's when the field is used for input, 6's for output and 9's for both input and output. To move a particular item to a different location Type a hyphen before and after the item and then place an equal to sign at the location to which you want to move the item. When the enter key is pressed, the field is moved to its new location. To modify the display attributes of a field, place an asterisk before the field and press the enter key. This will bring us to the select field keywords display. Enter a Y against display attributes and press the enter key. The select field display attributes screen is displayed. Enter the required display attributes and press the enter key to return to the work screen. You can also add fields to the display file that are not present in the database file. Place an entry as shown on the work screen. On pressing the enter key, the new field is added to the display screen. Note that FLD001 is included at the lower left corner of the screen to indicate that an external field has been added. To change the default field name, place the cursor in the space preceding the field and press the F4 key. The work with fields screen will appear. Here we have replaced the FLD001 field name entry with a new field name limit. You can also associate an error message with a particular field by placing an asterisk before the field and pressing the enter key to go to the select field keywords screen. Enter a Y against error messages and press the enter key. To associate an error message duplicate key with the customer number field, enter a value from 1 to 99 in the indicator column and duplicate key in the error message column. You must have seen that a sign position is included after the last digit for a packed numeric field. To delete the sign position, place an asterisk before the CUS ID field and press the enter key. The select field keywords screen is displayed. Enter a Y against keying options and press enter. The select keying options screen is displayed. Here enter a Y against keyboard shift attribute and press the enter key. This will bring us back to the main work screen. We have finished designing our screen. To exit and save our work, we press the F3 key. This will take us to the work with display record screen. From here, press the F3 key. We come to the exit SDA work screen. Select option 1 and press enter to move to the save DTS create display screen. As you can see values have already been provided by the system for the various parameters. 
you will normally not need to change any of these. Press the enter key. The display file as well as the DTS source will be created. To test the display file, select option 3 on the SDA display. You will be prompted for the display file and record format to be tested. On pressing enter key, the set test output data screen is displayed. Here we have the indicator 99 for which we can specify a value of 0 or 1. This is the indicator we had specified with the error message for the customer number field. On pressing the enter key, the display file we created is displayed. Press function key F2 to enter some test data. Once the data is entered, press the enter key to view the display test input data screen. Here you can view the indicators and input field values. The colon indicates where each field ends. You use the F3 key to exit from SDA. Let us move on to designing menus. From the SDA screen, select option 2 and press the enter key. Here we enter the source file and library name and also a name for the menu. On pressing the enter key, we come to the specify menu function screen where you enter a Y against work with menu image and commands. This brings us to a work screen where we can specify the different options in the menu. Press the F10 key to work with commands. Here we type in the CL commands that we want to execute when the user selects a particular option. Press the F3 key to go back to the work screen. Against each option, enter the text that has to be displayed to the user. This brings us to the Exit SDA menu screen. Fill in the required parameters and press the Enter key. Now we can test a menu by entering Go lib MNU on the command line. This command will display our menu. We can test the various options by entering the corresponding number on the command line. Summary In this chapter, we studied the SDF utility. We saw how to create a display file, how to test the display file and also how to create menus.